Hey there everyone, Michael here. Look at this perfect day we have in the Magic Kingdom and today we're going to make the old style Main Street Bakery cinnamon rolls. Now these cinnamon rolls that we're going to make together are not sold in the Magic Kingdom anymore at all. The only way to get them is to make them. I can think of no better way to taste the magic here at home than to make the Main Street cinnamon rolls. Let's get started. Now you can ask my family, I have been working on this recipe for years, for years to perfect it and get that perfect Magic Kingdom taste and today I'm going to share it all with you. Okay, first things first, you're going to want to take the butter and cream cheese out of the fridge, leave it out for a few hours, and let it come to room temperature. Just as a side note as I'm looking at this butter, this recipe is not low calorie. Okay, next we're going to need a small bowl. We're going to put in half a cup of water, two of those packets of the active yeast ingredient, and two tablespoons of sugar. Okay, here is half a cup of water. Next, we only need two of these packets of active dry yeast. Trick is, when you're doing this, either to use a scissors or not to tear the other pack. Ah, perfect. Okay, two packets, dry yeast. Now I just need Mickey hand here to get two tablespoons of sugar. Then you're going to want to mix it up with a fork here, not too much, just mix it up till it's, you know, coming together. Now it's not going to completely dissolve, but you just want the yeast to start being active and then we'll be able to put it into our recipe. Okay, now we're going to need a large bowl for the next ingredients. Okay, first we're going to need one 3.4 or 5 ounce packet of vanilla pudding. Now you're probably saying, Michael, vanilla pudding? Like, how does that fit in here? Trust me, it tastes great. Just trust it. Keep rolling with it. Okay, there's one packet of vanilla pudding. Okay, Okay, now we need to add two cups of milk and we're gonna mix it together with a wire whisk. You notice how I'm always holding it over the bowl here, that's because I have a tendency to spill it, so it just goes into one place. There's my Mickey wire whisk there to uh, mix it on up. Now it doesn't take long, you just mix it up and you're set to go. Okay, now we're gonna need one stick of melted butter. It's not this butter, this one's coming to room temperature, we're gonna use that one later. It's another butter, so let's pick that up right now. There we go, perfect. That's right, it's the old Michael camera tricks again. Michael camera tricks, you gotta let me know if you like them. They're fun, I, I, I think they're fun. Okay, so here's one whole stick of melted butter. Again, not low calorie, but when we're making this, no one's watching their calories. Now we need to add two eggs to the mix. No shells in these cinnamon rolls. And there's two. Now with everything in there, we're gonna grab our wire whisk again and start whisking it all together. Okay, now that that is all done, we're gonna add that yeast mixture that we made earlier and put it inside. Mix it up until the yeast is mixed in there. Now the next step is to add eight cups, that's right, eight cups of flour to this mix. Now if I did it in this bowl, which I could and have done before, I would be kneading for just about ever. I would get flour everywhere, ruin this nice shirt that my friend just sent me. So instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this mixture into a KitchenAid mixer and then add eight cups of flour from there. It makes everything so much easier. Now if you don't have a KitchenAid mixer at home, you can borrow one like what I'm doing, or you can add them manually. It just takes longer and you're gonna be kneading for a while. Just know that in advance. Okay, I'm going to pour this mixture in to the KitchenAid mixer. Can make the job a lot easier. Okay, we're gonna turn it on. Now you see I'm leveling it off with a knife here to get it exactly at eight cups. Here we go, starting with the first one. There's two, there is three, there's four. Now when you get to the fourth cup, you might need to let it keep going, actually mix it all in, and then you start adding more. So keep an eye on it so it doesn't go everywhere. Here's five, here is six, there we go. Oh my gosh, brain flour. <laughs> now when it gets to the point where it starts actually spitting flour back out at you, you might want to turn it off. Give it a second, roll it up yourself a little bit, or you can use a dough hook, which usually comes with these size mixers, and I am going to put into the mix. And let me raise it back up here, and here we go again. Okay, now the dough hook's been going for a little while. It's getting there. We got two more cups of flour to go. Number seven. Oh, my God. Okay, stay in there. Okay, we're gonna just add a little bit at a time so it can mix in. It's not going everywhere. All right, there's half of it, and here's the other half. There we go. All the flour's in there. Okay, the dough hook's done a great job. Let's just mix up some in the bottom there to make sure it's all consistent consistent and we get to the doughy consistency that we're looking for. Now the best thing to do when you're using a KitchenAid mixer, just let it keep going with that bread hook for a while and eventually it'll start mixing it up real well, but it just takes a while. Just let it go, it'll do its thing and we'll get there. Come on KitchenAid mixer, come on now. Just waiting for it to finish. Still working at it. Almost there. Any second now. Come on. Almost done. I'm waiting. Okay, it's just about done so let's take it down here and mix up just the very last bit of it by hand. Now make sure you're using a very lightly floured surface for this. We're going to take the bowl out and just dump it right there and we're going to knead the rest of it. And now to make it disappear. Bibbity, bobbity, boo! And there it goes. Now the trick with kneading dough like this is just be patient. Keep on going. Slowly but surely we're getting there. Okay, you can see we're getting closer now. We're getting much, much closer, but it takes still a little bit more kneading. Let's keep going. And consistency. Feels like forever, but we're definitely getting there, we're getting there. Get a little flatter and then knead again. It makes your job just a little bit easier. Okay, now that we've got it looking consistent, let's go ahead and grab a larger bowl that we're gonna use 
to let the bread rise. What we're gonna do is we're gonna grease the insides of this bowl to make sure the dough does not stick to it. Now you notice I poured a little bit of melted butter in there and I'm just using the butter paper that the original butter came in in order to grease it so it's nice and set to go. Okay, now that the bowl is nicely greased, let's put our dough inside and we're going to wait now for it to double in size. Now in order to let it rise, I'm gonna cover it with a little bit of saran wrap here and with Jessica's nice towel here that's just a little bit damp, it's gonna make it rise just a little bit better. Now we're waiting for it to double in size, so it probably could take 45 minutes for that to happen, so time to do something else. Okay, while we're waiting for the dough to rise, let's grab another small bowl and start making that cinnamon and brown sugar mixture. Okay, we've got our brown sugar and our cinnamon. We're gonna need two cups of brown sugar and two tablespoons of cinnamon. Let's start with the brown sugar first. I do love the new version of the cinnamon rolls at Disney World, but there's something really special about the old version. I don't know, it was, it was sweeter, it was fluffier, I just like them better. Oh my gosh, it's... Okay, there's a little extra in there, so we got uh, one cup and a little bit of brown sugar. That may have been a little bit too much. Two cups of brown sugar or so. Having too much brown sugar in this recipe, it's not gonna be a bad thing. Okay, now we need two tablespoons of cinnamon. I know it's a lot. Here's one. And there is two tablespoons of cinnamon. Now being very careful not to mix it up too fast so the cinnamon goes everywhere, we're just gonna mix it up nice and slow with a fork here so it gets all blended well. Okay, I think that's just about evenly mixed. Now let's go grab that dough and see if it's ready. Now take a look at this dough. It's the second time I've let it rise now. I've already let it rise once and now we're going for the second time. Okay, we've got the towel and the saran wrap off. We're gonna lightly very lightly flour this clean surface here. Get that flour all over. All right, we've got the dough. Oh, see, look how fluffy that is. That is perfect. Okay, the dough looks great. Now we just need a rolling pin to roll it out to about, this is approximately 34 inches by 21 inches. Now I'm not gonna be grabbing a ruler or anything to measure this out. I'm just gonna make a nice, even sheet of dough. Okay, that looks just about perfect. Now you don't want it too thick. The key is not too, too thick, but also not too thin or you can't roll it up. Let's move on to the butter. Now if you're on a diet, this is the part you may want to turn off the clip because we have two sticks of butter here that we have to melt and put across the entire thing. Now here's our entire stick of melted butter. We're just gonna put it across the whole thing and we're gonna use a paintbrush to paint it on our dough. Now here is my cooking paintbrush here. Let's paint that butter on the dough. There are no style points here, so if it's if it's a messy painting job, it's okay. There's no style points here. Now for those who are on a diet, you might be thinking, Michael, why not just cut it down to maybe one stick of butter? You have to take my word for this. You're gonna want two sticks of butter. That taste, the taste is amazing. If I'm gonna go on Disney runs, I might need to stop making these uh, special treats and start making something healthier. What do you think? Now let's pretend we're in Disney here and say calories don't count. Let's just pretend for a minute. When the road looks rough ahead and you're miles and miles from your nice warm bed. Okay, now that our dough is completely saturated in two sticks of melted butter, let's take that cinnamon and brown sugar mix and sprinkle it all throughout. Sprinkling pixie dust. Pixie dust with brown sugar. You want as even a coat as possible of brown sugar and cinnamon throughout the entire thing. I'm getting hungry just looking at this, just making it, I'm getting hungry. But here, a little bit there, a little bit everywhere. Okay, that is the end of our brown sugar and cinnamon combination. Okay, now time for the tricky part where we have to roll this entire piece of dough into one long jelly roll. Now the first time I did this I was making tears throughout the dough just about everywhere so the trick is to just be patient and roll it nice and slowly. So we're gonna start right up here and we're gonna roll very tightly all the way down so following it down here I'm just making a little bit of a roll. When I get to the end here, I just continue the roll. I just take another little step forward, just very slowly. This is a very slow process. So take your time. This is important. This is very important. You want to take your time with this and just roll it up. You see how I've rolled all the way up to here, so I'm going to roll this a little bit forward and then I'm going to continue down again. So keep going up and down, rolling it. Now you just have to be patient and gentle. You see how this is straight and I'm just rolling this one right here. Right there, and then I'm gonna continue rolling this one just like that, and then I'm gonna have this part continue to follow it along. So I'm rolling it into a big jelly roll. At this point, you might be tempted to just roll the whole thing together, don't do it. Just continue being patient. Just one little step at a time. Trust me, it's gonna pay off. Okay, here we are again, just continue it on. Again, being patient and continuing down the roll here. And just like that, look at that, we finished our entire cinnamon roll. Okay, now I'm going to move it very, very carefully so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. Okay, now it's time to cut our long cinnamon roll into little pieces. Now the trick is you want a very, very sharp serrated knife. It's gotta be about two inches, and give or take. And I'm gonna make little marks just so that I know where I want to cut. And you can vary the sizes too. There's no defined size, you're just looking for 
something that you like, and it's okay to experiment with the size. Try different sizes, see what works well for you. Okay, now that I've made some small marks here, I'm gonna get my tray that I'm gonna be cooking it on so that I can place them as soon as I cut them. Okay, now we've got our pan that we're gonna cook it on right here, so let's start cutting it into small pieces. Now let's start with that first one. Again, we're gonna cut all the way through. Serrated knife is the key here. Serrated knife all the way through, not cutting the counter. There we are with our very first cinnamon roll. Now once you have the pieces like this, you're gonna to wanna to take it in your hand and very, very carefully and gently press it a little bit together just so it all sticks together, not too tough, not too tough, just a little bit together until it looks just about like that so it's nice and compressed together and then you stick it right on that pan you're gonna cook it on. Okay, now it's time to cut the rest of the roll. Let's do it. Okay, now this is the fifth one we've put together and you wanna leave some space in between each of them on your buttered pan. Now, we're at 350 degrees in the oven. We wanna put them in for 20 minutes and then see how they come out. Let's do it. Okay, we've got a second cookie sheet here, so let's cut up some more of these cinnamon rolls. Now, using a cutting board beneath it is not a bad idea. If you have a cutting board to put beneath it, that's a very good idea. But again, I'm pushing these together ever so slightly so they stay together and putting it right on the buttered cookie sheet. Now, here it is again where I pressed it together. So you see none of the pieces are coming apart here. It's nice it's pressed together, it'll stay together while it's cooking. Don't get me wrong, I like Starbucks. I do, I do like Starbucks. But there's something to be said about that classic Main Street Bake Shop. I love it, I, I wish they would bring it back. I know they won't, I know they won't because Starbucks is successful, they're doing a good job, people like it, but I miss the Main Street Bake Shop. Okay, we've got another five on this tray. You notice there's a lot of space between them so they can expand because they're gonna expand a lot. So let's put this in the oven as well. Now don't forget to butter the inside of your cookie sheets or the cinnamon rolls are gonna be very difficult to get off. Now I've made this one slightly thinner than the rest just because my mom likes it when the edges are a little bit more crispy. When you make it smaller like this, it becomes a little bit more crispy. But myself, and my dad, more members of my family, we like it nice and soft throughout. So that's just personal taste. Now this one is extra small. It's like baby size there, but I'm experimenting and see how they turn out. Almost done with that entire roll. Now we got our last piece right there. There is always gonna be a place in my heart for Disney classic recipes. I'm telling you, it brings back your childhood. Now when you're down to the last piece, just like this one, you're gonna wanna smush it up as best you can. So I've got a little bit of a tail piece here. You can either cut it off or try and just push it all together so it becomes a little bit of a larger cinnamon roll. Usually I just push it all together until it comes out just like that. It's gonna be a little bit different than the other ones, but it's still delicious. Mmm, butter, cinnamon, brown sugar, delicious. Now while the cinnamon buns are cooking away, I'm gonna clear off this counter here so we have room to make the frosting. Now let's start making that cream cheese frosting. It's a little bit different than what you've seen before. We have a medium sized bowl and a few ingredients. Now you remember that block of cream cheese that we let soften to room temperature? This is where we're gonna take it out and put it in the bowl. Okay, here is our eight ounce block of cream cheese to room temperature. Come on, there he goes. Now we're also gonna need that butter softened to room temperature as well. How many sticks of butter is in this recipe? Too many to count. Now the next thing to add to it is one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now this pours rather quickly, so I'm gonna be nice and gentle with it, unlike the last video. Okay, see, there we go, it's coming out, there it is. One teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now we need to add the milk and the powdered sugar. This is a little bit difficult here because we need to add three whole cups of powdered sugar. You don't want it to fly everywhere and get over this nice shirt, so you have to be really patient and really delicate when you're adding that powdered sugar. It's gonna be a little bit tough because this stuff has a tendency to fly just about everywhere and I don't want it to fly into my lungs or onto my nice shirt, so I gotta be extra careful. Okay, now we've added the one cup of powdered sugar, and again, we're gonna go nice and slow. It's really helpful that this cream cheese and butter is at room temperature, because it's not flying everywhere. We're just mixing it up nice and slowly. I don't know, me and powdered sugar, they don't mix well, because it just has a tendency to go everywhere. Now look at that, see a little bit of patience and taking your time, and we're getting it to be a consistent, creamy to consistency. Okay, I think we're ready for our second cup of powdered sugar. Okay, powdered sugar, Time to play nice now, come on, there you go, there it is. Okay, here's our second cup of powdered sugar. Slow and steady wins the race on this one, let me tell you. No speed required. Okay, two cups down, one cup to go. Oh my goodness, oh my gosh, that's a lot, that's a lot of powdered sugar. Okay, back in the bag, you go there. Back in the bag. Okay, that is just about three cups of powdered sugar Right there. I know you, I walked with you once upon a dream. Now before we add the milk to the mix, take a look at those cinnamon buns and they're super hot, but look great. We got two and a half, and we're about three tablespoons of milk depending on consistency. That's it, not cups, tablespoons. There's one tablespoon of milk and we're gonna mix this up. Okay, time for the second tablespoon of milk. Here we go, two tablespoons of milk. Now this is a little bit trickier because I'm looking at the consistency of this cream cheese filling. I don't want it too thin where it just falls off 
the cinnamon roll, but I don't want it too thick where it doesn't kind of melt a little bit into the cinnamon bun. So I'm just looking at it, seeing if I need any more milk. I don't think I do. I think two tablespoons, maybe, you know what, maybe just a little bit more milk. Okay, now I'm only gonna add half, half a tablespoon of milk, just half, not a full one. Now I only added half a tablespoon of milk here because I don't want it to get too thin. This looks perfect, I think so. It's two and a half, or just about, depending on how much powdered sugar's in there, into your recipe until it's perfect. You want it just about like that, where it's starting to come off the fork just a little bit, but you can spread it on top of the cinnamon rolls. Okay, we finished the cream cheese topping and take a look at these amazing looking cinnamon rolls. Just look at those, don't those look amazing? And they're nice and hot. So now is the perfect time to put the frosting right on top. Now I'm gonna take this one right off the top there and I'm gonna start putting the frosting. Again, you wanna put it on right while they're hot so the frosting melts a little bit. I wouldn't, maybe it's not called melting, but at least it, it kind of blends in a little bit better. Now we're putting a big glob right in the middle and using a knife to spread it all over. You want all over the insides, a little bit on the outsides. Oh, delicious. Now don't forget, you can always make more frosting, so there's no harm in making a second batch or a double batch, so you can use it as a dipping sauce or maybe put a little extra on yours. No harm in that. Now the cinnamon rolls are all frosted and just take a look at these. They're still warm and looking absolutely delicious cinnamon rolls. Let's give it a try. Okay, let's give it a try together. It looks nice and fluffy. Bon appetit. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Just, just like the old style Main Street Bake Shop cinnamon rolls. Oh my, oh my gosh. It might not be good for the diet, I get that. But it's good for this, it's good for the heart, it's good for the Disney magic. And that's what's important, right? I sure hope you like this Cooking with Michael episode. Thank you so much to my friends for this towel and the shirt and the idea of the cinnamon buns. It means a lot. Now, if you give this recipe a try or you have any ideas for future Cooking with Michael episodes, I want to hear from you in the comments below. Thanks again for being a part of the magic with me. Until next time, bon appetit. Have a magical day.